Okay, so again, welcome to our Wednesday night small group. We have been studying for the last, this will be 10th week, comparative world religions. And we're going to back up a little bit tonight. I'm going to reiterate again to everybody that what I am providing in way of information about these world religions is coming out of three sources. I am not an expert on any of them. Um, the primary source I'm using is this one about world religions and what people believe. And I've got a couple of other books that I'm using as backups to it, but I'm not an expert. And I have said before, if you know of anything that I've gotten wrong or any questions to be sure and ask. The reason I say that again is after our last session, on Jehovah's Witnesses, I did get some feedback. Um, when it was posted on the church's YouTube channel, we actually had a Jehovah's Witness who commented on it and provided some disagreement, shall we say, with what I presented. And I'm going to tell you that in some cases, when I went back and looked at my sources, he was right. And in other cases, I don't see the issue. So if you're, I'm going to talk a little bit about what he said and correct a couple of things that we talked about last week that he tells me I had incorrect. But if you're interested in reading his full dissertation, which when I copied it off is two pages worth, uh, go to the church's website, to the YouTube for our discussion last week, and then underneath it, if you click on the comments, it will tell you uh, his comments and my reply. And my reply was basically what I just said to you. I'm not an expert on this. I'm getting the information from three sources. I'm not going to use YouTube as a place to discuss theology. But having said that, I think I do owe him and Jehovah's Witness some clarifications of some things that were said last week. So last week, one of the things that I had said or at least I think I said, and looking at my notes, I probably did, was I made the comment that Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe in modern medicine. Uh, they were compared to Christian science as being against using medical procedures. And his reply back with that is incorrect. We do go to hospitals and doctors. We accept many forms of medicines and treatments. They do not accept blood transfusions, and organ transplants. Now, he mentions blood transfusions. My book mentions organ transplants, which I would assume is because of the blood involved with that. So that is one correction I need to make. Uh, they do believe in going to modern medicine. They just don't believe in organ transplants and blood transfusions. Uh, secondly, I had made... A, I think I made the statement that they go door to door as a way of works to get into heaven and he refuted that and said no that is not what they do they go door to door because this this, this is their way of membership growth and for them it's following the um, great commission in Matthew that says go out in all the world that's their way of going out in all, to, all the world to do that so they do not preach that door to door as a way to get into heaven I had uh, Mr. Russell's death wrong in one place in my notes, not a big deal, but in one place I had him dying in 1914. He didn't die until 1916. Uh, a question was raised last week in the class about whether or not Jehovah's Witnesses were required to sign over property to the congregation, and he was very adamant that is not the case. They are not required to sign over property. They do not, they are not required to tithe. Uh, what they give to support their congregation is based upon what they feel like they should give. So, put that out. He gave me a different number for the number of Jehovah Witnesses worldwide. I had said, I think it was like 6.7 million, and he says it's almost 8.5 million. Different sources will give you different numbers. I don't see that as being a big deal. Uh, he does make a big point about the the discussion we had last week that for them there is one God and one God only and that's Jehovah 
I don't really think I said anything different than that last time, but just he, he basically justified from his Bible that it's one God and one God only, and that's Jehovah. In some ways, he took um, umbrance with how I describe what happens when a person dies. I said that a person ceases to exist in my notes, and he said exactly the same thing. The difference was, I think I said that at death they are annihilated, and he said, no, they are asleep. The annihilation is after the resurrection, and they have rejected Jehovah's Witness uh, testimony. At that point, God annihilates them uh, because there's no hell. So, but he did say, at death, a person ceases to exist, and they are asleep. And he quotes Jesus' comment to the disciples about Lazarus being asleep. And the idea is, if they're asleep, they can be awakened. So, you can decide how you want to treat that. Um, he did not, he talked a lot about Jesus not being God. He did acknowledge that Jesus was created by God. And he talked about the fact that Jesus was a spirit body before he came to earth in Mary's womb and that the angels and God and Jesus exist in the spirit realm as spirit bodies and we can't see them because we're in the physical realm. Uh, and then he agrees that um, he agrees that Jesus did offer his life as an atonement. That's a point of agreement. Um, Jesus is not part of the Trinity. Uh, we're not in agreement with that, but that's his statement. And then he had a paragraph on Jesus dying on a stake versus a tree. And his comment to that is the cross is a pagan symbol that's become, I didn't include it, object of veneration by some Christians. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but... Um, the cross, he says, is a pagan symbol, and Jesus died on the stake, and it's a matter of how you interpret the, uh, the Greek. As I said last week, they, have, they do have their own version of the Bible, and like some other religions we talked about, their version of the Bible supports their interpretation of Scripture. So there were some things that I had wrong, or that I said wrong, so hopefully I corrected that. If you'd like to read, again, his entire dissertation. Uh, it's on the church's website on the YouTube channel under comments and I'm going to leave it with that. Uh, if we get other comments I will let you know what people have said. I do not intend to get in a theological discussion on a Facebook trend thread. That's just not the place to me to discuss that kind of thing. Okay, any follow-up questions or comments before we move on? I thought you said that they went to sleep when they died last week. Yeah. That's what I remember. I don't remember you saying they were annihilated. I don't remember. I, I think I made the comment after. somewhere about they were annihilated, and I think I made the example. To me, annihilation is like being shot with a laser or something. You just go to dust. Yeah, I don't. You know, I, I, I didn't go back and look at my I don't video. Know. I, mean, I, yeah, I, I looked at my notes. And like you said, I'm not going to get into an argument. Yeah, I, I looked at my notes. I didn't try to watch the entire video again. Yeah. yeah, that's what I remember. But okay. I... We'll leave it with that. Yeah. Because okay. yeah. the next one is going to be just interesting enough. We're talking Scientology tonight. All right. It's going to be different enough that it will, if anybody from Scientology watches this, they will probably get upset with me too. So we'll leave it with that. I don't mind being upset. I am trying to provide the best information I can to the group from the sources that I've got. So take it for what it's worth. Okay, Church of Scientology. We were talking earlier about the celebrities that are Scientologists. And that's probably the thing that when you think Church of Scientology, that's probably some of the first things that people are going to think about are the celebrities that are members of the church. Uh, and particularly Tom Cruise and John Travolta. Uh, it's not unusual to see things that they have said in some of their past interviews that are supportive of the teachings of that church. Uh, I haven't honestly heard anything much about them and the church 
recently, but it, not too long ago, I remember them being in the news because they were Scientologists. This was actually a concerted effort by the founder of the church to get celebrities involved. One of the first places where he founded a church was in Hollywood, in Paris, and in Nashville. Can you think why? Celebrities. Celebrities. Because if celebrities support your teachings, they get other people interested and other people become members of your congregation. So that was a deliberate attempt on the part of the founder to do that. In the United States, the church actually flourishes. And I use, that was the term that this book used. And when you look at the numbers in the United States, that probably is true. It flourishes because of our freedom of religion. In many other countries, and particularly Europe, for one, but in other countries around the world, the Church of Scientology is labored, labeled as a dangerous, dangerous cult. And in some countries, it is in fact banned. And the church then says that what those governments are doing is interfering with the human rights of their membership by not allowing them to worship openly in their countries. Uh, I don't really have a comment on that. Just be aware that in some places, the church itself is banned because of its teachings. In the United States, up until 1993, the U.S. government did not recognize the church as a valid, legitimate church. They tried from the founding in 1953-54 up until 93 to get recognized as a tax-exempt religious body. It was not until 1993, and that's the last date I have, that they were actually granted tax-exempt status in the United States. According to the church's own reports, there are over 8 million followers in more than 150 countries and in more than 60 languages. So like a number of the other religions that we've talked about, it does have worldwide influence. So how did the church come about? Well, the church was founded by a guy named L. Ron Herbert. Herbert was a science fiction writer who originally started in England as far as writing his for my, my term, pulp fiction or novels to go in magazines, and then eventually he wrote a whole series of science fiction novels, one of which, Battlefield Earth, was actually made into a Hollywood movie and actually had quite a good review from the critics. Uh, that's the only one I know of that was actually made into a movie. But as he founded the religion in 1952, it was founded as a philosophy to coordinate a person's mind and spirit with their body. And more about that in a minute. As a young man, Herbert studied Sigmund Freud, psychoanalysis, for those of you that remember your psychology from school. He was the guy who developed psychoanalysis techniques, as well as a number of other Eastern philosophies. So think of the Eastern religions we studied, like Hinduism and Buddhism, and some of that leaks over into Scientology. Many of the aspects that he taught, you can actually find in his sci-fi novels. So some of the plot holes or plot directions in his novels actually show up in the religion. According to Scientology, people can discover information about their past lives using special technology and techniques unique to Scientology, such as something called an e-meter, and something called oddity. And I'll talk about those two things in a minute. By removing the negative energy from your previous lives, you can uh, reach your maximum potential as a human being. In order to do this, they actually have their own lexicon. So these are terms I'm gonna use over and over, so listen close. The first term is the term Thetan. Not Satan, Thetan. T-H-E-T-A-N. Got to be careful how you say it. T-H-E-T-A-N. Thetan is their term for the immortal spirit of an individual. Then an engram 
is a recording of past negative experiences in your mind. It's not a memory. It's not something you can just call up, I don't think from what I read, but it's a past negative experience that you identify by the use of this e-meter, which Herbert designed and built. Uh, then there's what's called clear, which means you've eliminated all your Ingrams, so you no longer have any um, negative experiences, you're all positive. And then there's what's called an operating Thetan, who is a person who has gone past clear and they're now able to interact with the universe as a whole. The first church was founded by Herbert in California in 1953 or 1954, depends on which book you read as to when it was. Uh, their current headquarters is located in California and Florida. And when Herbert died in 1986, the church announced to their followers that Herbert had voluntarily given up his mortal body for higher level spiritual research and now lived in another galaxy. More about that later. They do not have a central holy text. They do not have a Bible, if you will. Their Bible, my term, is a book written by Herbert in 1950 called Dianetics, The Modern Science of Mental Health. And the book advances theories of how to improve yourself. It's a self-improvement book. Based upon a combination of philosophical approaches, okay, remember he studied Eastern philosophies, and scientific theories, Sigmund Freud. So he took psychology and Eastern mysticism and joined them as a um, self-improvement book. The idea being that you can eliminate negative and painful emotions, stress, unhappiness, and therefore if you eliminate them, you will um, achieve maximum potential as a human being. Originally, he sold the idea as a new form of psychology. But as it caught on, it became applied religious philosophy. Now, to make it easier for people to understand what he was saying in Dynetics, he wrote two other books, one called The Science of Survival and the other is What to Audit. And these were commentaries on how to use his techniques. And in 1981, he published a booklet called The Way to Happiness, which laid out a moral code, so think me again, think 10 commandments. He had 21 commandments or principles of morality, which he said was the first moral code to be totally developed using common sense. Now, I didn't try to list all 21 of them, but I did list half a dozen because some of them sound very much like the Ten Commandments or things that were taught in our Bible. So he espoused such things as don't be promiscuous, honor and help your parents, do not murder, do not steal, do not do things to others that you would not like them to do to you, and try to treat others as you would want them to treat you. Nothing wrong with those. In fact, when you read all 21 of them, they sound fine. They sound like something that comes right out of the, the scriptures. Then you get into looking at what they say about God, Jesus, and so forth, and it now becomes not so much a self-help book, but a religious philosophy which is contrary in many, many ways to mainline Christianity. So, for God, Church of Scientology does not define God or a supreme being. So for them, there is no God as we think about him. Whether you call him Jehovah, you call him God, you call him I am. They acknowledge that part of mankind, part of the being of mankind requires a supreme being. They acknowledge that mankind inher inher inherently needs a supreme being to worship. But how you define that supreme being is up to you. How I define it may be different than how you define it, and we can both be right, because we define God as how we want God to be. As you progress through the various stages of life, and these are the multiple lives that you will lead, you will be further enlightened and raised to a higher spiritual plane, 
and your concept and understanding of God will evolve as you go through these different um, levels of enlightenment. The church itself describes itself as non-denominational, and you are perfectly okay to be a, a Baptist, a Methodist, or any other religious place you want to be. As long as your faith in that religion does not restrict you from reaching your maximum potential by following the tenets of Scientology. So you can be a Scientologist and a Baptist, or a Scientologist and a Hindu. I'm not sure how that works, but they're very open to you being whatever you want to be, as long as it doesn't hinder you from reaching your maximum potential. As for Jesus, they don't really mention him that much in their scriptures or in their documents. If he's mentioned at all, he is either denied altogether, historically he didn't exist, or if they acknowledge that he existed, then he is a tool of the mainstream church, and specifically Roman Catholics, as a means of controlling their membership. He is not the creator. He is not God. He is not an operating Thetan. Remember, the operating Thetan is the one who has cleared all his bad energy and has risen to the top level. He has no supernatural powers. He did not die for the sins of mankind. And people are inherently good, so they have no need of a savior. So Jesus is not really part of their religious belief. He doesn't fall into their faith system. The Holy Spirit, as we talk about him, again, not part of their belief system. Doesn't figure in. For salvation, there is no sin. People are inherently good. There's no such thing as sin. So therefore, there's no need for repentance. Therefore, there's no need for a savior. Mankind is a Thetan, that immortal spirit who has unlimited power over the universe attached to a human body, which deflects, decreases your ability to interact with the universe, and therefore you haven't reached your potential yet. You have to progress through different levels to reach your potential. It's not reincarnation, they say. No. To them, mankind is an immortal spirit who has lived and will live countless lives. Unlike reincarnation that says we reincarnate here on earth and we could be an animal or, you know, you move up and down depending on your karma. For them, you live, you have lived and you will live countless lives, perhaps as other species at other times and in other galaxies. The goal is to reach maximum potential, which means you have to get rid of all your negative engrams. Salvation is achieved when your personal self-awareness allows you to obtain your maximum potential, and therefore, like Herbert, you have reached a higher level and you are released from your mortal body. In order to reach salvation, you must work with an auditor. Remember I said one of their techniques was auditing. Come back to that here in a minute. Working with an auditor, something like clergy, but it's their practitioners um, who will help you get rid of your engrams or your negative experiences in order to reach a state of clear where you have gotten rid of all of them and you are now at your highest level of maximum potential. Mankind's ultimate goal is to reach their highest maximum potential. Hell does not exist for Scientologists. Heaven does not exist for Scientologists. In fact, in one of his speeches, Herbert claimed that in a previous life, he in fact visited heaven. And heaven is not a place of rest. That is a total deception. Heaven is a barren, evil place but it's a false dream. And I'm not sure how I reconcile those two. If it's a barren, evil place, how is it a false dream if it doesn't exist? I'm, again, not sure how you equate those two. But heaven and hell basically don't exist. At death, a person's spirit is free to assume a higher life form, which increases their spiritual awareness and helps them to progress towards 
operating Thetan plasmas. And that next life form is not geared to having to be here on Earth at this time or in this galaxy. Now here comes the fun part. When it's originally, according to the way I interpret what the book I've got says, when a new member, a new person, wants to have an interest in Scientology, the basic beliefs of the religion are kind of geared to the idea of self-improvement. You know, again, my words, self-help book. You know, his original book was on how to take philosophy and psychoanalysis and reach your maximum potential and get rid of unhappiness and all this kind of... That's how it's sold at the beginning. However, like some other ancient religions and maybe some of the more modern words, there is a mystery or secret knowledge that you gain as you advance through the different levels within the church. And this is where it gets really interesting. Again, I'll tip, remind you that the religion was founded by a science fiction writer. The secret background of Scientology goes like this. 75 million years ago, Earth was part of a galactic confederacy ruled by the tyrant Xenu. Xenu was immortal and had ruled the galactic confederacy for 80 trillion years. There were 76 planets within the galactic confederacy and all of them were overpopulated. To remedy this, Xenu kidnapped billions of people transported them to Earth by means of space-traveling airplanes. These people were deposited around Earth's volcanoes, and hydrogen bombs were then dropped into the volcanoes. Needless to say, the resulting explosions killed most of the people present and solved the public population problem. While it eliminated the physical bodies, it freed all of the victims' souls, or thetans. So we have these spirits wandering around the earth, and it didn't kill everybody, but it killed most people. So these free spirit souls, these thetans, were then subjected by the tyrant to mind-manipulating cinema. So they had to watch movie, movie pictures, I guess. That taught them that the conceptions of the world's religions about God, Jesus, heaven, and hell were all deceptive concepts meant to control you. Today, those thetans attach themselves to babies when they're born. They're attached to humans. And in order to remove the thetans, you have to go through hours of um, auditing and using the e-meter and counseling and so forth. Now, the good news was that eventually he was overthrown and thrown into prison by an eternal force field that is located under a mountain, either somewhere on Earth or on Mars. They're not sure where. So in order to gain freedom from these bad spirits, these thetans, and to progress in your knowledge of the right thought, you have to undergo one-on-one -on -one counseling with the church clergy, which is called the auditors, and while they do not have a paid clergy, you are expected to pay your auditor for his time and his information and his use of the technology. And in other words, he's basically, in my opinion, paid clergy. They just don't call him clergy. The church is open seven days a week for church services, although they do conduct regular worship on Sundays. But for them, services are not a worship of the divine. They are basically motivational speeches with the idea of building happy and happy individuals, families, and communities within the Church of Scientology. And then you can go to an auditing session, which you have to pay for. Needless to say, the church has been involved in all kinds of controversy. Um, many people claim that it's nothing more than a money-making scam. Many nations have banned them as being a dangerous cult. Um, they are definitely not anywhere close to mainline Christianity or to any, actually to any of the 
offshoots of Christianity that we've looked at. They're just different. Yeah. And I'll leave it at that. So questions or comments on Scientology? Miss Brandon. Um, when Brady. When Bra I, Brandy, right? Yes. Okay. I said Brandon. I, I know a Brandon. Brandy. Uh, when my husband took, my ex-husband took me to Scientology to, uh, he, he had taken a couple of classes there or something like that. And I remember I went in there and they made, they made me do like some sort of test. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I did get out of that was that when you're reading something and if you don't understand a word, you continue to read, then you won't be able to focus until you go back and catch that one word. So that's, but then they, then they stopped me for like 10 years. I kept sending me mail and phone calls and I'm like, well, like I was writing on the, them and sending them back, like leave me alone. And so, but yeah, but that guy, I don't remember what happened, but I guess I wasn't cooperating right. So he told me in a different room and he said, he sat me down and he like wanted me to make up sentences about like seven different sentences about the color of the carpet or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I was creeped out. And so he, he's trying to do some psychology on you or something. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So. There is a very large building downtown that says Church of Scientology yeah. across the top of it. I don't know if they, I assume they have the entire building. I mean, it's like a five or six story building. But that's not the same building as when I was yeah. from, they, it's newer. It's, I have only noticed it. I, I go downtown or, or did go downtown to work at Union Station Volunteer. And it's been within the last year or so that I can remember seeing the sign on top of the building come up. Yeah, basically. And what's really interesting is right close to where the downtown campus of Church of the Resurrection is located. Uh, Which, I don't know if there's a the meaning there or not, the, but. What street is it on? Uh, what's the street that runs in front of uh, Crown Center? Grand. Grand. Whatever the street that runs in front of Crown Center. When I leave Union Station, I come up to the corner, and if I go this way, I'm going in front of Crown Center. And if I go that way, which I think it's Grand, I think Main yeah, is the one. It is Grand because I drive. If you go Grand, work. <laughs> about three blocks. The building is on your right. It's kind of a red brick building. And at night, the sign is lit up. During the day, you'd probably miss it because it's not lit. That's why I don't see it. But at night, when you come by, it's lit up in lights, you know, Scientology or Church of Science. So I think it's on the right going back out of town on Grand. Could have to take a trip downtown at night. Yeah, <laughs> Just so you can see the building. Well, like I say, it's, it's right close to where they were building a campus of Church of the Resurrection. Which and where's the Church of the Resurrection? Yeah. Because I worked down on it. It's, it it's just Center, before yeah. you get to the Scientology building. I think Ford is like on the corner of, of um, Grand and 19th. It sounds like it's in that old insurance building. Yeah. It's in that area. They yeah. It's yeah. it's kind of the almost the same area where Ford. they were building the condos, the city center condos or something. But they're, building they're, they're all right in there together. The, both of them yeah. are on the same block, and they're on the right side of the road is coming out. I'm going to check that out. I looked at it. I don't know why I need to I'm know about that. Tomorrow, because it's Thursday. I'm checking that out. You, you, you can, can check, check it out. It out let me you can show. check it out. Let us know on Sunday. Take pictures. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's there. As I drive. Um, at least I think they've opened the Church of the Resurrection site, but there was a sign there that said Church of the Resurrection in the building. Yeah, it's been open for over a year. Yeah, I thought it thought it was. So they're right there together. Just just try to watch. Don't have a wreck. But no, it, it's there. I'm I'm not gonna take pictures. <laughs> this is this is really an unusual so religion or a, this is different. So, he covered up. Other. Comments? How could, Not while you've got the sound on. <laughs> okay. How could anybody no. with any kind of a brain... Oh, well, shut up, Janice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of hard on it. I guess I will... No, I'm, I'm just going to leave it with that.
The problem is, they think the same way about us. Yeah. That's true. That, that's kind of where I was going. Yeah, but you're, that's why I said I wasn't going to say anything, because they think we're weird. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like the comments and discussion I had with the Jehovah's Witness on his comments. I mean, he, he understands it his way, we understand it our way, and we're not going... We can respectfully disagree. Right, and, I, and as long as you we, respectfully, and, we'll leave and as long as he understood that you were not trying to trash yeah. his religion, you were just giving the facts well. as you need them. Well, I won't that's... say that. You need to read his remarks. He was, in some ways, not kind. But that's but he we'll, he lives with that. You don't have to. I don't have. You know, like I said, I'm not going to discuss theology on a Facebook feed. He has his beliefs based on his Bible. We have our beliefs based on our Bible. What I'm going to tell you is as best as I can tell you what I get from my research. And if it's wrong, hopefully somebody will tell me. He did. I corrected it for him. If somebody from Scientology gives me some more information, I will let you know. There are people like the guy that contacted you that they want to get on and have a fight. Mm -hmm. they want to have a and I'm not going to have a fight. No. Okay, let's close with prayer and then we got a few minutes before we end. So let's just close. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night. Thank you for this time that we can look at another world religion. And even though for us it doesn't make a lot of sense, there are a lot of people in the world that it is their faith system. We just pray that you will help us to be understanding of them, be loving of them, but help to point them to the true religion as we see it, and that is the worship and love of you. For we ask it in your name. Amen. Amen.